Good afternoon, members of parliament, support staff, visitors in the Tribune, radio listeners, TV viewers, those viewing via social media, and the, me and the members of the media. Welcome to this Central Committee meeting number 30 of today, Thursday, May 19, 2022. We've established a quorum of eight members. Please let's stand for a moment of silence. I have received notice of absence from the following members, MP William Marlin, MP Sarah Westcott-Williams, and MP Rolando Bryson. Is there any member of parliament that wish to have the floor for notifications? I see no need. We have today as agenda points for this meeting the adoption, uh, the adoption of the report regarding the draft kingdom law containing rules on the establishment of the Caribbean body for reform and development the so-called Kingdom Law Caribbean Body for Reform and Development. This can be found under IS 547, Parliamentary Year 2021 and 2022, dated 11th of February 2022. We go over now to the agenda point for this meeting. Parliament received the proposed Kingdom Law containing rules on the establishment of the Caribbean Body for Reform and Development, the so-called Kingdom Law Caribbean Body for Reform and Development. We received this from the governor, governor on February 11, 2022, and this report, as stated before, can be found under IS 547. The draft consensus Kingdom Law states that government of the government of the Netherlands, Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin having the well-being of the populations of Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin, would like to consider working together to implement reforms of administrative nature, achieving sustainable and public finances, and strengthening the resilience of the economy of these countries. It is desirable that the Netherlands temporarily makes liquidity support available to Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin, and that the governments of the Netherlands, Aruba and Curaçao and St. Martin, have agreed that in accordance with Article 38, the second paragraph of the Charter for the Kingdom of the Netherlands, an administrative body with independent tasks and pow powers to be established that will, be, that will provide support. For St. Martin, various meetings of Parliament was held with experts who share their expert opinion on the COHO. Subsequently, each faction was requested to provide a position paper for their respective faction. During the IPCO of May 4th to May 6th, 2022, this proposed Kingdom Law was discussed as well, and during which each country indicated their, their position on the proposed Kingdom Law. It is during this IPCO held on St. Martin that agreements was reached that all parliaments will submit their reports by May 20th, 2022. This report containing comments and remarks of the factions was made up and submitted to the Central Committee meeting after the deliberations of May 16th, 2022 to be approved. According to the rules of order, the report is approved by the Central Committee meeting and sent to the chairperson of the second chamber for further handling. With regards to the procedure Kingdom Law, Article 15 to through 21 of the Kingdom Charter regulates certain parts of the Kingdom Law procedure. Based on these articles, parliaments are able and allowed to research the proposal and bring out a written report. This report is answered by a responsible minister in case, in this case, the State Secretary. The parliament of these three countries can choose to send one or more special delegates to the handling of the proposals who are allowed to be present and also give information through a speech. These special delegates can also propose amendments to the proposal of the law and also submit motions. However, only the members of the Dutch Second Chambers are allowed to vote on the aforementioned and the, aforementioned and the law proposal. Currently, the report is being translated to the Dutch language by the Secretariat and will be sent tomorrow to the Second Chamber. I see that there is a member of parliament right now. I'd like to now turn the floor over to the members of parliament. And I see that MP 
Sihard Bijlani would like to have the floor for any additional comments or questions to the report. MP Bijlani, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair Lady. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to the Kafir. Good afternoon to my colleagues and good afternoon, St. Martin. Basically, a lot has been said about the coho, but I had some observations which I would like to bring forward. The draft consensus kingdom law establishing the Caribbean Reform and Development Entity, COHO. The basis for this consensus kingdom law is the agreement signed by the government of St. Martin and the government of the Netherlands, represented by the Prime Minister of St. Martin and the State Secretary of the Netherlands on December 22, 2020. This agreement is based on Article 38, Paragraph 1 of the Kingdom Charter, and established the country package for St. Martin. In this agreement, amongst other, it was also agreed that a temporary work group, in bracket TWO, will monitor the execution of the implementation agendas in awaiting a kingdom law to formalize this. The kingdom law, as referred to, is based on the same Article 38, Paragraph 2. It mentioned paragraph, it is regulated that countries can agree to regulate by kingdom law, that is the reason the word consensus is being used. This part is known and serves as an introduction to the following. I followed closely the presentation by the technical team of government, the presentation by the Minister of General Affairs, our Prime Minister, and the experts, and also at the IPCO. Below are some of my points of interest I would like to all of us pay attention to. The representation of the countries in the institution COHO. As mentioned, this institution will be the formal body to monitor the execution of the implementation agendas and by doing so, replacing the current temporary work group, consisting currently of only Dutch civil servants. Based on Article 9 of the draft, the Board of COHO will consist of three persons. Although a procedure is described in mentioned article, which provides for the participation of the countries, takes place based on expertise, social knowledge, and experience. These further stipulates that at least two members of the COHO, including the chairman, have an affinity with the Caribbean part of the kingdom which further demonstrates being expert in the economy of the Caribbean countries and has experience with the culture, society, and politics of the area. Furthermore, in Article 10, it is mentioned that the COHO will take a decision based on the majority. This is an unbalanced situation and creates a lack of re representation of the countries in this institution. A more participatory board would be the proposal for the evaluation committee as mentioned in Article 33, namely five members, one each from Aruba, Curaçao, St. Martin, and Netherlands, and jointly selecting the chair who must have affinity with the Caribbean parts and must have expert knowledge of economy of the Caribbean and experience with the culture, society, and politics of the area. Other observation was answered to Parliament of St. Martin. Based on Article 7 on the request of Parliaments, one or more members of the COHO will provide the Parliament with an update on their functioning. Obviously, this is not answering to the Parliament as is regulated in our laws. This article needs to be formulated differently for the COHO to really answer to the Parliaments of the countries. It is obvious that the implementation agenda is the country's responsibility. Therefore, it is only logical that the institution monitoring the execution should answer to the parliament of the countries. Parliament should have the authority of either overrule the decision of the COHO or inform the state secretary of our concerns with the request for it to be discussed in the Kingdom Council of Ministers and for sure make a note in the monitoring report, so this can be taken into consideration when the evaluation, as mentioned in Article 33, takes place. 
In the analysis of Coho, several possible pros are identified as to what makes Coho a viable body to promote administrative reforms on St. Martin, achieve sustainable public finance, and strengthen the resilience of its economy, including the rule of law necessary for this. However, there are cons that could not be kept in mind when considering whether COHO is the best strategy for promoting or implementing these reforms, and to what extent is it likely to encroach on St. Martin's constitutional autonomous governing authority. That will be all, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, MP Bijlani, for your comments and uh, questions. Is there any other member of parliament that wish to have the floor? Yes, MP Ludmila Duncan, you have the floor. Good afternoon, Madam Chair Lady. Uh, good afternoon to the SG. Good afternoon to my colleagues here in Parliament. And of course, a good afternoon to the good people of St. Martin. Uh, Madam Chair, in the last meeting, we discussed, uh, of course, a number of the issues that have been echoed throughout the entire Dutch Caribbean about COHO, about this draft law as it stands, the far-reaching powers of the Minister of BZK, the issue with liquidity support being tied to the reforms, uh, the encroachment on Parliament's authority, the blanket approach to reforms because of this one entity. And so um, I believe that there should be a local approach to the reforms because we all agree that the, re the reforms are necessary. 12 years after, maybe not all of us, but uh, most of us agree that the reforms are necessary um, after 12 years of, of, of this new status. And so I just have a few questions to add to the report, uh, Madam Chair Lady, that I hope the Dutch government uh, will respond to. First is, as it concerns the law, the draft law, and the realities mm -hmm. of each country, those realities being mostly unique, uh, can a local approach be taken into consideration? So and again, in another form, can an entity be set up locally on St. Martin to manage the reforms and to provide subsidies and development aid to uh, organizations? Um, as opposed to the COHO as presented in the draft law. And finally, how open is the government of the Netherlands to, uh, as it pertains to negotiating a new model for um, the reforms and the management of any financing further? And um, that's it for me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Duncan. Uh, next on the speaker's list, I have MP George Van de Vlet. You have the floor. Yeah, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon to my colleagues in Parliament, the persons that are viewing, those that are listening by the available medium. Madam Chair, as was stated by um, the opening speaker, this matter has been discussed in and in and out and out and over and over. And um, I believe our, our remarks, our points of concerns have already been, been made. Um, I just want to say to the people of St. Martin again that uh, anything that the government or parliament does or decides upon has to be in their best interest. Um, my standpoint is definitely known already. Um, I asked the question more than once I, 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 in, in this meeting, I'm sorry, in the meeting of parliament and also during the um, EPCO meeting with regards to the difference between the coho and what is being done right now, and I got my response, which is clearly there's no difference. Therefore, again, my standpoint is I don't see the need of a coho. Amendment changes up, right, left, whatever it is, Madam Chair, I don't see the need for such. But again, um, it's gonna be handled in the second chamber, and interesting is gonna be their response, because again, what will play a major role in whatever they want to decide is the issue of the word consensus and whether Aruba Caruso ever wants to decide on it, we also have to decide for ourselves how we want to proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Pantaflet. I see that MP Duncan would like to have the, the word. 
Yes, thank you, Madam Chaley. I just wanted just to, um, to clarify. So in my questions, also, if a local approach cannot be taken, why not? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, MP Duncan, for that. Uh, is there any other member of parliament that would like to have the floor to add to the report? I see that there's no need then. I would just, have, just like to add two minor details that I didn't get to add two days earlier. Um, in general, the idea, we, as we already know, the idea behind a kingdom financial supervision is that um, the kingdom law financial supervision is that after the country has three consecutive balanced budget, the financial supervision will no longer be needed. Standard, that's how it's set up. My question is, in case that the CFT gets a role in this cooperation, what would happen if the country had three consecutive balanced budget before the ending of the co? Because it seems as though the discussion with the CFT is as though it's been extended by means of the kingdom co. And if that's the case, we would like to know as well. Lastly, I would like to know from the government, or maybe if they can confirm, if they have been, um, if they have paid any attention or made any adjustment based on the advice of the Kingdom Council of State on the note of amendment regarding the role of the CFT and creating some sort of a financial department in the COHO. Those are my last tidbit. I see that maybe one more, no, no, okay. I think that's the last of it uh, for me and I think that is also the final for everyone. So if uh, members of parliament, if there's no comments, then I would um, assume then that the report with, the, with these additions today are approved. Yes? Oh, no, I see not. I think we need to add one more yeah, MP, just, yeah. MP point of it. Sorry, Madam Chair. Um, just a remark, practically. Um, we know that on Monday, the State Secretary will be visiting um, St. Martin. I read an article, and she, in the article, it mentioned she'll be discussing matters. She came to talk not only to politicians, but also to the people. Um, again, one of the things she mentioned prior to um, the, determining what day she's going to come to the islands was that um, she wants to deal with 12.5% and all she's going to discuss the matter of the coho. So it, it, it's just for the public to know that it'll be interesting, basically, while it is going to be handled in the second chamber, that the state secretary still plans to discuss the issues that we have with the coho um, and the different countries. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, MP Pantaflet. Again, as was stating before in my closing, um, all that was said today will be added to the report, and the report will be sent to the second chamber tomorrow in accordance with the rules of order. And in addition, at the top of the report, a short synopsis of this handling at our parliament will be given. And like in my introduction today, and all the position papers will be added to the report. So with that, again, I can now conclude, close, in closing, that this report is now have our approval to be sent to the government, the second chamber, and the ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of this meeting. I'd like to thank you for your brief participation. In addition, this meeting is now closed. <laughs>